Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2005 Freightliner school bus with a C7 CAD engine. The complaint on this bus is that the bus loses air as soon as the parking brakes get released. Um, the driver said he couldn't drive it because as soon as he releases the parking brakes, a couple minutes later they reapply and he can see the uh, air gauge or the air needle on the dash going down as soon as the parking brakes get released. So what we're going to do is we're going to go inside the bus, confirm the complaint first and then we will do a visual inspection. We're going to go under the bus to inspect the uh, brake system. Remember I'm talking about air so this is air operated. So we're going to do a visual inspection. Hopefully we can find where the leak is. I'm suspecting a leak and then we will fix it. So let's go inside the bus. So I am inside the bus right now, building up air pressure so we can test the braking system. So the parking brakes are applied right now. The light is on. And what we're gonna, the gauge we're gonna focus on is gonna be this gauge right here. So this is the air pressure gauge. There are actually two gauges on, on this rear, on this indicator, there is the white gauge and then the orange gauge. The white gauge is for the primary system and then the orange gauge is for the secondary system. Okay. So let's just wait. Okay. The purge valve has just released air so the governor kicked in and uh, shut off the air supply to the tanks. So right now there is an air leak. It's not leaking right now. But watch what happens when I release the parking brakes. As soon as I release the parking brakes, right here, you see this gauge going down. This is not supposed to happen. On a good working air brake system, when you release a parking brake, it's supposed to hold pressure. And as you can see, the uh, parking brake light came, in, came on. So we have uh, gone below the threshold so we have tight so the parking brakes have applied but as soon as I apply the parking brakes the uh, the leak stops and as you can see our gauges here have stopped but if I release the parking brakes the gauges go down pretty weird right when I apply right there I hope you guys can see this do you see that going down? And then once I apply, it stops. Okay, so I'm gonna build air pressure back up. So we can go under the bus and find out where this leak is. Because I already tested, I checked around this uh, pack brake valve here. We don't have a leak up here because sometimes these valves leak too. So I tested up front here already and we don't have a leak. All right, so the engine is off now. Uh, the system only leaks as soon as I release the parking brakes. So I'm gonna release the parking brakes now and then we're gonna go under the bus so we can find out where this leak is. Uh, it's, pretty, it's a pretty loud leak, it's a pretty big leak. I can hear it from, from inside the bus. So I believe this is gonna be easy to find. So let's release the parking brakes. So I am under the bus right now and this brake chamber here is leaking. So this driver side uh, brake chamber is leaking and hopefully you guys can see right there. Okay, and we just ran out of air. So this brake chamber here is the problem. I hope you guys saw that. Uh, it looks like it's leaking from the parking brake end of the brake chamber because the brake chamber has got two ends. This big end here is for the parking brake. This is the parking brake side. And then the front here is the service brake side. Okay. So I think that's enough. Uh, now the next step is going to be removing this brake chamber. So I guess this video is going to be how to remove and replace a brake chamber on a school bus. This is pretty straightforward, uh, pretty easy. 
actually we're gonna replace that slack adjuster too so we're gonna remove those two pins over there and then it's got two nuts here and there and then we're gonna remove this uh, these two air lines and then our brake chamber is gonna come out so let's do that all right so I am down here um, I don't have the bus on the lift so it's gonna be a little bit tight down here and I don't know if I said it already uh, I'm sorry for being repetitive here. This is a 3030 type uh, brake chamber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these uh, slack adjuster pins. So I'm going to remove this slack adjuster pin retainers here. Just going to use a screwdriver and take these off. Okay, so I just got the pin out of the way. So now I'm gonna slide the pin out. So here comes one of the uh, clavis pins off. Just gonna put it on the side. And now I'm gonna remove the other one. Okay. And then I'm gonna remove the big uh, clavis pin. And then actually guys, these look a little bit easy to remove. You know why? Because I had to use a torch to heat these up. That's why you see this slack adjuster boot here is completely, uh, is completely burnt. So I had to use a torch. So that's why you see them. That's why you see these clavis pins coming out really easily. So you might want to use a torch to heat this up before you can get these pins to come off. And we're removing the uh, slack adjuster too, so I didn't bother uh, protecting this boot because we're gonna remove it anyways. So now the next step is gonna be disconnecting the air lines. So the big line, this line right here is the, uh, service, the service brake line and then the smaller one here is the park brake line. So I'm gonna start with the uh, park brake line up here. I hope the camera is picking that up. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing up here. All right, so I removed the first line and now I'm going to remove the second one and guys these lines are a little bit are coming off really easily because I had used a torch to heat them up Usually they don't come out really easily like that. So I already preheated these lines just to make the video go faster. All right, so I got the other line disconnected. So I'm just gonna push both lines aside. So we got the uh, clavis pins removed and so now the next step is gonna be removing these two nuts that hold the air chamber in place. So here comes our brake chamber nut. One is out. And now let's remove the second one.
All right, so here comes our brake chamber. Uh, this actually is an elongated hole, so I'm just gonna slide it out. And here is our brake chamber. So it's a little heavy. Hopefully you guys can see this. So I'm gonna get it out and then I'll bring you guys out with me. We also gonna remove this slack adjuster. Actually, this slack adjuster is damaged. Uh, it's bad. The uh, adjusting mechanism in the slack adjuster is bad. So I figured it would be easier and better to remove it as uh, we are replacing the brake chamber. So we're gonna replace this as well. And I already removed the snap ring that holds the slack adjuster in place. So at this point, I'm just gonna slide the slack adjuster out. And here, here it comes. Here comes our slack adjuster. All right, so now I'm gonna install our new slack adjuster. A slack adjuster is really easy to install. You have to make sure that as you install it, your slack adjuster is lined up straight like this. Uh, this side is gonna be a little tough, but we're gonna get it. So you gotta make sure your slack adjuster is straight like this. And then there is a shim. There is a shim here. There are actually two shims that go right on the uh, S cam. And then there's a snap ring. There we go. There we go. So I just installed the snap ring and I'm able to turn it, which means that the snap, the snap ring is sitting properly on its groove. All right, so this is how you install a slack adjuster. Now we are not done. The next step is let's go out and prepare our new brake chamber. So we are here on the bench. Here is our old brake chamber. As you guys can see, it's really rusted out. No wonder that diaphragm was leaking. I believe it's punctured there. And it looks like the uh, park brake spring is broken because this ride is supposed to be straight, but it's sitting at an angle, okay? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the length of this rod. So from the base of the uh, brake chamber to the beginning of the clavers here. So, and the rule of thumb on this 30-30 type brake chamber, especially the ones on this uh, Freightliner school bus, is the length of the rod is four inches. And right there, I have four inches. And this rod also is sitting at an angle. So the measurements, it's not gonna be, the measurement is not gonna be really accurate, right? So I'm gonna go just based on experience, based on what I know. Uh, I've done this, you know, a bazillion times. The length of the rod, I mean from the base to the uh, uh, clavus here is, four inch, like I said. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring our new brake chamber in the picture here. Here's the new brake chamber. And as you guys can see, this new brake chamber has got a long rod. We don't need this whole long rod with the parking brakes applied because at this point, the parking brakes are applied because we don't have any air going to the park brake chamber. I mean the park brake side 
of the air brake chamber to actually release the parking brakes. Since there isn't any air going to it, the park brakes right now are being applied. With the parking brakes being applied, the length of the push rod should be four inches. So what we need to do, we have to measure four inches from the base, like I said, and then right here. So I'm gonna mark this rod. So four inches would be right about this point. Okay, and let me show you guys the mark I just made. So this is the mark I made, right? So, and I actually have a new uh, clavis here and clavis pins that we're gonna use. Here is our new clavis. So what you need to do is you don't want the threads, okay? You don't want the threads sticking, the threads on this rod sticking out enough. So you don't want the threads, I mean, coming out at this point. So your rod should be within the threads of your clavis here. I don't know if I'm making sense, but you don't want the thread, your, your push rod sticking out far enough around this area. So now the next step is going to be cutting this rod because since we only need four inches of this rod, so I'm going to put it on the vise so we can cut this push rod. Okay, hope you guys can see right here. We're just gonna, so we're gonna thread our gem nut all the way towards the bottom of this threaded section here. And when I cut this rod, I'm gonna use this gem nut to fix the threads on the nut, on the, on the push rod. Noise from all over. There's noise in every corner of the shop. So, uh, let's see. Just double checking, so four inches right here. So now I'm going to use this sawzall to cut the push rod. Alright, All right, so the rod has been cut. We only need this section. If I double check our measurements here, we are right there at the four inch mark. All right, so when we double check our measurements, we are right here at the four inch mark. So from the base to that four inch mark right there. All right, so that's good. Now let's clean these threads. So I'm just I'm using this gem nut to clean the threads. Right there. So now I'm gonna install this new clevis. So there goes our new clavis right there. So what you don't want to do is you don't want your push rod sticking out further in this area. So we want to screw it about 
until right here. So what we want to see is about four inches from this base to around this area right here. So let's double check one more time. So right there, we have four inches. And again, if you want to tighten this, we can tighten this gem nut a little bit more. Okay, we can push this a little bit back to thread our clavis a little bit in, but this should be enough. So four inches right there. Okay, so from here to here. Usually, that's the rule of thumb. I mean, it's not the uh, spec on this. It depends on the vehicle you're working on. It depends on the type of truck or bus you're working on. But I spread on, on our Freightliner school buses, usually that's the measurement. That's the rule of thumb on these. Okay. So at this point, we are almost ready. Our, I mean, this side of the uh, brake chamber is ready. The next step is going to be getting our uh, airline fittings installed. I mean, when I replace these brake chambers, I always like... I always like to replace the air fittings too. Uh, these are the old ones. I can still reuse them. They're not bad. But since I had to heat these airlines to get them out, so I got those uh, brass fittings heated, I'm not gonna reuse them. You can if you want to. It's just a matter of preference. I do have new ones here. So these are the ones I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use some uh, thread sealant here i'm going to use some teflon tape to install them so i'm going to install new um airline fittings and then we're going to go back under the bus to install this brake chamber all right so as you can see we have two openings here the opening closer to this side this is the uh parking brake side so the parking brake end and this is the service brake side. So the port next to it is the service brake port. And then the port next to the uh, parking brake side is the spring brake. It's actually written here on, on the uh, air brake chamber body. So the first one is this big mama right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this plug and I'm gonna apply some Teflon tip on the threads here. Okay, that's enough. I'm gonna thread this in. And also keep in mind of the position of these fittings. I mean, you can still adjust them as you install the lines, but it's always good to get them as close as possible so you don't have to twist them too much when you are under the vehicle. All right, the first one is installed. Now let's do the same thing for the other one. And I am also going to remove the uh, the air lines. I'm going to replace them too. Uh, the air lines that go from the uh, relay valve to the brake chamber. But uh, I'm not going to include them on this video. That's what I'm going to do next after installing this. But I mean, uh, those lines a little bit of pain to remove and I also don't want this video to be super long so I'm not gonna install that I mean I'm not gonna I'm sorry I meant I'm not gonna show that in this video how I'm gonna remove those lines because I had to uh, I had to hit them with a torch so usually when you hit these lines up 
it's always good to replace them because if you leave them or if you, you reuse them, if they don't start leaking right away, they will eventually start leaking. So it's always better to be on the safe side. So I'm going to replace them. So the brake chamber is basically ready right now. Uh, we can go under the bus and install it. So I'm going to swap those lines first and then I'll bring you back up so we can install this brake chamber. Alright guys, so we are back here under the bus and ready to install our brake chamber. Now what I'm going to do is remove this new nut. And this bracket here, this uh, brake chamber bracket has got elongated holes so we have to make sure we install our brake chamber on the hole that's closest to the frame to the bus frame so with the angle you guys won't be able to see that so I'm gonna go right up here so the pin is in and I'm gonna use a cotter pin. I'm gonna use this cotter pin on the other side to retain the pin. Alright, so now the next step is installing the second slack adjuster pin. So slide this on and then install and then I'm going to install the car pin on the other side. So I got the slack adjuster pins installed. So now the next step is going to be tightening this brake chamber nuts down. So now we can all slack adjuster pins have been installed. And the bolts sometimes get rusty, but usually they are not that hard to replace. So what's the next step guys? The next step is going to be installing the, uh, the airlines. So this one is the uh, park brake line. I don't like how it's kind of close to the close to the drive shaft but it's not touching but I'm gonna install the uh, service brake airline first before I install the uh, fast brake So this one is going to go in here. Uh, Alright, so here is the right size. So I'm going to tighten this service brake line. Alright, so this side is tightened. Now I'm going to install the other side of the brake line and actually I have replaced these airlines because they were completely rusted out when I removed them and like I said I had to use a torch to get these out so that's why I replaced them it's usually when you heat these up they tend to 
leak afterwards. I always like to put a little bit of Teflon tape on these threads. You don't really have to, you know, based on the type of fitting we have, you know, but it's always have to be extra careful. So now the next step I'm gonna make is removing this caging tool. I'm gonna remove this caging tool here and I'm going to use it to cage our spring brakes. Okay, after installing this caging tool, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside the bus, start it, fill up the air system, and then I will release the parking brakes so that I can pull this diaphragm on this side back and push the emergence, I mean push the uh, slack adjuster towards the front. So let's do that. So just watch this push rod. All right, so as you guys can tell, our push rod has been pushed uh, out, which actually applies the brakes. So I'm gonna have someone in the bus turn it off, apply the brakes for us a couple times, and then we'll do some last checks before we wrap up this video. All right, I've been released the brakes. Apply the service brakes. There you go. All right, guys. So we are done. Um, the brake chamber and the slack adjuster have been installed. And if everything has been installed correctly, our slack adjuster and our brake chamber push rod should make a 90 degree angle. And as you can tell, we are making a 90 degree angle right here. So I'm sorry for the poor lighting. Uh, I don't have a good light down here and I don't have this bus on the lift so it's a, a little bit of a pain filming and doing this. So 
Uh, we're gonna end here. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumb down. But if you do, you gotta tell me why. If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in the comment box. And while you're down there, don't forget to ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to adjust these brakes a little bit more. So, but we're good. Uh, I'm gonna test drive the bus and see if these brakes will need a little bit of adjusting or not. So again, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.